Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can implement the ASP.NET Core 8 Identity Email Sender in our application using the MailKit package. So, as you can see over here on the left hand side, we have our web application project which has been set up to use ASP.NET Core Identity. As you can see inside the areas folder, we have our identity pages view start file. Within the data folder, we have our application DB context class, and we also have our create identity schema migration. Within our pages, we then have the pages that make up our web application itself. We've then got our app settings files, our Docker file, and also our program startup. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is add our SMTP development app settings. So if we go on ahead and open up our app settings.development.json, at the bottom of the file, I'm going to add a new section in here called SMTP, like so. And inside this block, we're going to want to create two settings. So the first setting that we are going to want is called host and it's going to have a value of localhost. And then we're also going to want a setting called port. And this is going to have a value of 1025, like so. So those are the two relevant app settings that we are going to need for our application. And what we're going to do now is create a corresponding options class that we can bind these application settings to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click web application, add a new directory, and I'm going to call this directory options like so. Within this directory, I'm going to add a new class and I'm going to call it SMTP options. Now within this SMTP options class, we're going to model those options from our app settings.development.json file. So first of all, I'm going to create a string constant called SMTP, and that's just going to equal SMTP. And notice this SMTP here is the name of the app settings in our app settings.development.json file. So if you've called this something different here, then make sure you align this constant name with whatever you've called the block of settings in the app settings.development.json file. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to say a public required string, and then we're going to say host with our getter and setter. And then we're going to do the same thing with our public required int port, again, with the getter and setter like so. So that's going to map to the host setting and the port setting that we previously defined in our app settings.development.json file here like so. So now that we have that SMTP options class created, we're going to go on ahead and install the MailKit NuGet package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the NuGet package manager here in the IDE, and I'm going to do a search for MailKit. And at the time of recording, the latest version is 4.8.0, and I'm going to install that package into the web application project. As we can see there, that package was successfully installed into our project's dependencies. So what we can do now is actually implement the email sender interface from the ASP.NET Core identity package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click our web application project I'm going to add a new directory, and I'm going to call this directory services. Within this new directory, I'm going to create a new class, and I'm simply going to call this class email sender, like so. Now the constructor of the email sender is going to have injected into it an I options of type SMTP options, like so. And this class is going to implement the I email sender 
from the Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity UI Services namespace. As we can see here, we can now implement the missing members like so. And this here is the send email async method, which is what we are going to be implementing. First of all, though, just before we do that, I'm going to create a private read only SMTP options, just called options like so. And this is going to equal options dot value that we get injected into our constructor. So now that we have our options injected into our email sender service, we can now start implementing the send email async method. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is create the body of the email. So what we can do is we can say using var body equals new, and we can say a new text part like so. This is going to be text format dot HTML because this is going to be the HTML message, the third parameter there of the send email async method. And then what we can do is we can say body dot text equals HTML message. Next up, we can say using var message equals new mime message like so. And then this is where we're going to initialize the actual email message itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to say message.from.add. And this is going to be a new mailbox address. For the purposes of this uh, sample, I'm just going to specify the name as null. However, the from address I'm going to specify as no reply at example.com. Again, feel free to customize the name and the address to meet the particular requirements of your application. Next up, we're going to say message.to.add. And then once again, we're going to say new mailbox address. I'm going to say null for the name. And then I'm going to specify the email parameter as the address for the mailbox address. Now, at this point, you may, for example, store a user's name in your ASP.NET Core identity a user database. And if you do, it's at this point that you may want to look up that user using the email to then get their additional details, for example, their name, in order to then use their name in this mailbox address constructor. But for the purposes of this sample, to keep it straightforward, we we'll simply set the name to null and then just use the email as the address. Next up, we're going to say message.subject, and this is going to equal the subject parameter that gets passed into this method. And then last but not least, we're going to say message.body equals body, using the text part body that we created at the top of this method. So what we're now going to do is we're going to new up an SMTP client in order to connect to the SMTP server and send the email. So what we're going to say is using var client equals new SMTP client like so. And then we're going to say await client dot connect async. And then we're going to say options dot host and then options.port, like so. This will then use the host and the port that we define in our app settings in order to connect to the SMTP server that we have defined in those settings. And then once we have connected to the client, we're then going to say await client.send async, and then we're going to pass in the message that we want to send. And then last but not least, we can say await client.disconnect async in order to disconnect from the client once we have sent the message. So just to recap, what we're doing in this method is we are newing up a text part with the text format HTML to store the body text for the email. We're then newing up a MIME message with our from address, our to address, our subject, and our previously created body. We're then newing up an SMTP client. We're connecting to said client using the host and the port defined in our app settings. 
we're then sending our message using that client. And then last but not least, we are disconnecting from the client. So now that we have implemented the email sender interface from ASP.NET Core Identity, we can now add in the relevant services into our program startup. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our program.c sharp file. And then what I'm going to do just beneath builder.services.add razor pages, I'm going to say builder.services.add transient. This is going to have the first type parameter of I email sender. And the second type parameter is going to be our email sender class that we just created. And last but not least, we can say builder.services.configure of type SMTP options. And this is where we're going to bind our app settings to the SMTP options class. So what we can do here is we can say builder.configuration.getSection and then we can say SMTP options.smtp like so. And that just means we can reference the SMTP constant from the options class rather than using the magic string SMTP in this instance. So what that will do is it will override any a default email sender from the identity framework with R email sender implementation, and it will then configure the SMTP options in order to bind the SMTP app settings to that SMTP options class. And that means then we can inject the SMTP options into our email sender service. So that is the bulk of our application changes now complete. And what we're going to do is we're now going to open up the Docker Compose file. And within here, I'm going to add in a local development SMTP server. So for the purposes of this sample, I'm going to use MailDev. However, feel free to use any alternative SMTP server to meet your conventions or requirements. So what I'm going to do is just beneath the DB service, I'm going to create a new service here called MailDev. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to specify the image and the image is going to be maildev forward slash maildev. And I'm just going to pull in the latest version of that image for the purposes of this sample. But you may wish to pin that to a specific version depending on your particular requirements. Next up, I'm then going to bind the ports that maildev runs on by default. And so that's going to be port 1025 from the host machine to port 1025 of the MailDev container. And I'm also going to bind there at port 1080 from the file system into port 1080 of the container. Next up, last but not least, similar to what we've done with Postgres, I'm going to define a simple health check for the MailDev container so that I can ensure that the container is healthy. Now that we've defined our MailDev service in Docker Compose, we can now update the web application service. So you'll notice here that we have our depends on DB with condition service healthy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to specify another dependency for MailDev. And I'm also going to specify that the MailDev service should be healthy before starting the web application service. Next up, you may recall in our app settings.development.json, we specified the SMTP host as local host. Now, when that's running locally on our host machine, local host will route correctly through to that MailDev container. However, when we're running in a Docker container, local host will be the actual web application local host and MailDev is running in a separate container, not within the web applications container. So what we can do is we can specify an additional environment variable and we can say SMTP underscore underscore host equals MailDev. And that will route through the host name from the web application container to the MailDev container. 
so it will use that mail dev container that we've defined above as the SMTP server for sending email messages. So what we can do now is we can build and deploy our application locally, and then we can demonstrate those changes having taken effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build and run the Docker Compose uh, configuration like so. This will build our web application and it will also start the associated uh, dependent services. And as we can see here, if we expand uh, this Docker Compose node within the IDE's Docker window, we can see that we have our DB healthy. We can see that we have mail healthy and we can see that we also have our web application running like so. What I am going to do is I'm going to open up the browser, give this a refresh here, and we can see that we have our web application running on port 7002. And if I give this a refresh, we can see here that we have MailDev running in the browser on port 1080, and we can see that it's receiving all emails on port 1025, like so. So what I'm going to do is in our web application, I am going to select register. I'm going to enter my email like so. Again, you can just use any um, dummy email, for example. The password, I'm just going to enter a simple uh, placeholder password like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, register. And as we can see here, I've been redirected to the register confirmation page with a message to check my email to confirm my account. If I then pop up here to the mail dev tab, you can see that I have a new email on the SMTP server. And we can see here that the email is from no reply at example.com and the email is being sent to the email that I used during that registration. And we can see the body of the email suggesting that I should confirm my account by clicking on this link. So if I click on that link like so, you can see here that I have successfully confirmed my email address. If I now hit log in there like so, I can pop my email in and I can use the password that I just created. I can then hit log in and we can see that I have now successfully logged into the web application. Back in the IDE, if I open up the database tab here on the right hand side, if I open up the ASP.NET users table, you can see here that I have my registered user and we can see here that the email confirmed has been set to true, which indicates that I have successfully confirmed my email address. So what we've covered in this video is an implementation of the ASP.NET Core Identity Email Sender interface using the MailKit package. And we've also configured MailDev as a local SMTP server in order to uh, mock out or stub out the sending of emails in our local environment rather than actually sending real emails to our genuine email address. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.